This lesson looks at how we can actually measure the humidity of an air-water vapor mixture. So in the last video, we defined a few terms. One of them is the specific humidity, given by omega, and the relative humidity, given by the simple phi. And we can relate these two to each other. Or in other words, we can calculate one from the other, knowing the atmospheric pressure and the saturation pressure. So omega is given by 0.622 phi times the saturation pressure divided by the atmospheric pressure subtract the saturation pressure. So these two formulas are probably good to write down or bookmark in your textbook because they're handy for converting one to the other. And again, PG is the saturation pressure of the mixture. What we want to know is, experimentally, how do we measure either omega or phi? To do that, we'll consider something called an adiabatic saturator. Adiabatic means there's no heat transfer. To analyze the system, we first need to look at the entropy of an air-water vapor mixture, or the enthalpy of humid air. So the enthalpy is given by HA plus omega multiplied by HV where H is the enthalpy of the mixture per unit mass of air. HA is the enthalpy of dry air. And HV is the enthalpy of water at the mixture temperature. Now as an, as an approximation, at low water vapor pressures, HV is approximately equal to Hg. So we can rewrite this formula using the saturation pressure instead of the enthalpy of the water. So that's the enthalpy at the saturation pressure for the given temperature. So coming back to this uh, adiabatic saturator. The saturator, we're given an initial set of conditions, and at the outlet of the saturator, the relative humidity is 100%. So we're adding water to the system. We know the temperatures at the input and at the output, but the relative humidity at the input is unknown. So to analyze the system, we first do our mass balance. So the mass going into, into this control volume are the mass of the air, mass of the water vapor, plus the mass of the liquid. Coming out is the mass flow of air, plus the mass flow of water vapor. So if we simplify this, the mass of the liquid is equal to the air mass flow rate multiplied by the difference in specific humidity. If we do an energy balance on the system, we're now using the, the energy in is equal to the energy going out, and we're using the enthalpy of the mixture as we defined a few seconds ago. So the mixture going in plus the water going in is equal to the energy of the mixture going out. Now, as an aside, we know that the enthalpy of the liquid is equal to HF at temperature 2, or the outlet temperature. So we'll substitute that in. We'll also substitute in the above expression for the mass flow rate of the liquid.
and we'll get this expression here. Now we can rewrite this in terms of omega 1. Here I'll put in Cp and the temperature instead of the enthalpy of the air. So this is derived in the textbook. If you're not following along too closely now, you can go look in page 738 of the textbook. And we'll notice here that Hg minus Hf is also known as Hfg. So here's that formula we just had there. Again, Cp is our 1.005 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. These two values here are functions of the inlet temperature, or functions of T1. And these three values here are functions of the outlet temperature, or T2. Omega 2 can be determined by calculating from phi is equal to 100%, or relative humidity of 100%, using the formula at the start of this video. So from all this, we can calculate the unknown omega 1. So really, we just need to know the T1 and T2. So suppose T2 is 30 degrees Celsius, T1 is 35 degrees Celsius. We'd pull up table A4, which we're familiar with. We need this value here, the HFG and the HF. So values at T2 and T1. Those would go into the formula. And here's the process from 1 to 2 shown on a TS diagram. Now here, we'll take an ordinary thermometer, and we'll turn it into what's called a wet bulb thermometer by putting a wick or a moist paper towel or a moist sponge on the bulb of this thermometer. And this will behave as an adiabatic saturator. So the airflow going over this is similar to our T1. And T2 at the bulb of the thermometer it will be 100% relative humidity because it picks up moisture from that wick or that paper towel. So we call this T2 the temperature measured by the wet bulb thermometer, the wet bulb temperature. So we'll abbreviate that as TWB. That's equal to T2 in an adiabatic saturator. So if we take a wet bulb thermometer and a normal thermometer, which we'll call a dry bulb thermometer, we'll get two temperatures here. The dry thermometer is the T1 of an adiabatic saturator, and the wet bulb temperature is T2 of an adiabatic saturator. So using this kind of device, we can calculate omega, or the humidity, of the mixture.